Hello everyone. Today is the monthly makes video. I'm going to share with you everything that I sewed in the month of February. I'm Sharon. Welcome to my channel, a channel all about sewing. In today's monthly makes video, you'll get to see me modeling everything that I sewed. Let's get started. First up is the Madison Cardigan by Style Sew Me. Happens to be the one I am wearing. This was sewn out of a polyester knit. It's a little bit of a textured knit from a mystery bundle that I received from Fabric Mart Fabrics. If you've seen some of my Friday Sews videos, you may recall that I was originally going to sew this cardigan out of a snakeskin rayon lycra knit, but I didn't have enough fabric. Yay, that actually worked out well. I pulled out this green, which I don't wear green. Now I'm wondering why not. I really like it. I have worn this cardigan multiple times already and it's only the first week of March. So you know that this has become a favorite really quickly. In terms of construction, it's a very easy cardigan to sew. I sewed a size medium. The one thing I do wanna note and make you aware of if you do sew this is I found the bicep area to be very narrow. I did do a one inch bicep adjustment and then I found when I sewed it up, it was still just a little bit tighter than I like. Ended up taking the seams apart and ended up sewing it in a very scant one quarter inch seam rather than the one half inch seam allowance that it is designed for and it worked. Line. The movement on this cardigan is fabulous. Have a look. The Madison cardigan from Style Sew Me has a seamed back and a high-low hem, which creates that fabulous flow in the back when you walk. The cardigan is designed for knits and keep in mind that the wrong side of your fabric will show. You'll need about three yards of fabric, 60 inches wide for this. With only five pattern pieces, the part that's going to take you the most time is hemming all the edges. One of the dresses I sewed in February was the Erin dress by Style Sew Me. This is a rather simple dress to sew. It doesn't look like much on the hanger, but you put it on and with the right fabric, it's pretty cute. It's a very simple design, but you do want to make sure that you choose the right fabric. This is a very lightweight crepe woven, no stretch that I purchased at SR Harris. Probably you shared it in one of my fabric haul videos and it worked out beautifully in this pattern. There are side seam pockets and my favorite part are the little ties at the bottom. Now I did have a couple of things I wanted to mention to you about this pattern. First of all, under the materials required, it called for one yard of interfacing. I could not find anywhere in those instructions where it tells you to even use any interfacing. I did interface the neckline facing just to add a little bit of stability at the neckline. You, know, you wouldn't even need to use a facing. I think if I sew this again, I would probably just finish that neck edge with a self fabric bias binding. So I'm guessing the one yard of interfacing that it calls for was a mistake. So don't buy a yard of interfacing if you don't have interfacing on hand, if you're going to sew this, because you're not going to need it. Seam allowances for this dress are one half inch. I found it easier to finish my seam allowances on my serger before I stitched it up. On the pockets, I did add a strip of interfacing right at that pocket opening just to help stabilize it a little bit and then understitch on the pocket to help it stay inside. The only little challenge I had with the pattern is I found the instructions just a little bit confusing when you get to the part where you're finishing off this tie down here. I couldn't tell if I was supposed to clip a corner or if I was just supposed to create a fold. I ended up creating a fold. I didn't clip it. I created a fold and you know, you, you tie it in a knot so you don't notice it anyway. Again, soft drapey fabric. It's just going to flow nicely. Have a look at how fun this dress is. The Erin dress pattern does include two views and this is view B. I had sewn one up first to test the fit and there's a lot of excess ease here. I ended up sewing between a large and a medium and you can see I could easily have gone down to a medium 
possibly even a small depending on the fit that I want. Now I like this looser fit. I love the pockets down there. I do think you need to be careful on your fabric choices. You want something that flows as I mentioned but you don't want it to look like a beach cover up or a big old moo moo. The pattern does have a tiny little V at the center front at the neckline. It's just a little design feature and I chose to eliminate that. This dress only has five pattern pieces, a front and a back, the pocket piece and the two facings. And I think those side ties that drape down are just so much fun to wear. Just a little extra feature on what's really a pretty basic dress. I had to pat myself on the back in February because I managed to finish a couple of my whips. One of them I ruined by catching it in the searcher and putting a hole in it. Talked about that in a Friday Sews video. So you're not gonna see that one here. But one of them is this Vogue 2517 from 1980. Boy, am I glad I didn't put this through the serger and put a hole in it. I would have been kind of disappointed. And I have to tell you, I'm not gonna call them whips anymore, work in progress. I'm gonna call them projects half done or PhDs because that's what Terry left a comment on one of my videos and said that's what she calls it because then on the weekend she could say she's working on her PhD. I love that, that made me smile. So in February, I finished one of my PhDs. <laughs> So 2517, which is right here, when I put it on, I have to admit that I felt like I had given myself a beauty sash, a beauty pageant sash. That white is just too white. It's just too out there. So I like the dress. I'm not crazy about the fabric that I chose for it. This one has been a four year project. I first pulled it out and started it four years ago, had it pretty well put together, put it on and it was too large. So I just didn't want to do it. So I put it in the closet, pulled it out a little bit later. This was during a time that unbeknownst to me, an undiagnosed medical condition had been causing a weight gain. So I discovered it was too small and I was going to cut it apart and then add some to the side and it just seemed like a lot of work so I put it back in the closet. Then of course we moved to cross country and it came with me and I finally pulled it out and finished it. So I'm sad that I chose the wrong fabric which I didn't realize till I took photos and realized I had a beauty sash. But now that the fitting issues have been taken care of, I can now choose new fabric and sew myself one that I will actually wear. Have a look at what it looks like. This is a Dion von Furstenberg pattern, and she, of course, was known for her wrap dresses. This dress, however, is a faux wrap dress. There's supposed to be two little ties that are attached right at the waist where those two white pieces meet. I forgot to add them, and I'm not gonna add them at this point. I think it's fine without them. I do think with different fabrics, this could be a very flattering dress. That diagonal just is slimming. Now, I wasn't very successful, but it had rained a couple days previously and I'm trying so hard to not let my heel sink into the ground. <laughs> oh well. The pattern did have facings along the front and the back neck. And I guess that's just the way they were done in 1980 when this pattern was released. If I sew this again, I'm going to eliminate those facings. Also, what do you think? Should I shorten this or leave it long? I like the longer look, but I'm not sure. I did make a cute little Valentine's Day apron in February. It's candy hard fabric, it's got two little ruffles, it's got two hearts applique on the pockets, and then I put shiny little buttons right there just for a little bit of bling. I did do a tutorial on my blog if you prefer a written tutorial, or a full video tutorial, which I'll link above, if you'd like to sew one for yourself. As I thought about what I wanted to sew in February, I realized I had a little dolman sleeve top that I pulled out over and over and over. So I sewed myself another one right here. This is the Banna dolman sleeve top. This is from the Sew News Plush collection. It is a PDF pattern. Having sewn it once before, I already knew it was going to fit. One thing to note, if you do sew this top, 
the bottom of the sleeves are very tight. This particular fabric was something that I picked up at Walmart. I don't know if you have access to Walmart, and if you do, do they have pre-cut bundles? That's what this was. I did have a challenge in that the fabric wasn't quite wide enough because this is one piece and with the dolman sleeve, you can see it's a cut on or grown on. I'm not sure what the correct terminology is, but it's all one pattern piece. So you need to put it on the fold and you need the full width of the fabric for your long sleeve. I did not have enough for the full width of fabric. So there's actually a seam here at the edge, adding a little bit more length to it. The fabric is a polyester knit and it is a textured knit and it worked great in this top. I do like the comfort of a dome and sleeve top. This is one of my instant gratification projects. You can sew it in about an hour. Instead of a contrast fabric at the yoke, I just changed the direction of the stripes. I like the little interest that it adds to it. I sewed two It's Just Stitch Gothenburg tops this month. One is this beautiful red out of a wool blend, like a ponte knit, and the other is out of a soft French terry. I have an entire review video for this top. I'll link that above if you haven't had a chance to see that yet. This is the easiest little top, but put on a pair of skinny jeans and heels and look how glamorous it looks. It has a very 60s vibe in my opinion. There's only three pattern pieces. You can't go wrong with that. This is another one of my instant gratification projects. In February, Cashmere released their expanded sizes for their very popular Cashmere wrap dress. And I sewed one for them. I was honored and delighted to be able to test this pattern for them using this beautiful, soft, cotton jersey knit from Hearts Fabric. This dress has a reputation for the great fit in the no gap wrap. I was a skeptic, but I'm now a believer. This is a size 10 and I used the G slash H cup size and it fits beautifully. Have a look. This is the first wrap dress that I have sewn in a long time that I really like. The fit is really nice. I had some fun playing with the styling. Here I threw on some sneakers and my little Texas baseball cap, put my hair back in a ponytail, and grabbed a backpack. Here I added a little hat in a colorful little bag and my favorite blue jean sandals. Add heels, a necklace, and a little clutch, and you are ready to go out to dinner. Here I added my over-the-knee suede boots, a great big tote bag, and a floppy hat. Perfect for Texas winters. I pulled out another vintage Vogue pattern and whipped it up in February. Technically, I didn't finish it until the beginning of March, but I'm still sharing it with you for a February make. It is Vogue 2058. This is a Scott Berry design from 1979, and I used a beautiful pink rayon jersey knit. It really doesn't look like much on the dress form here, but I really like the way it moves when I have it on. Construction is rather simple. The pattern is a size 16, which is not a size I would normally start with. I would usually start with a size 12 and something that's oversized like this. So I took the pattern piece and I just folded it, took out about two inches out of the width. It's still very, very wide, very big. It's supposed to be large, it's supposed to be drapey. It does have side seam pockets. I did enlarge the pocket piece a little bit because I needed it large enough to be able to put my cell phone inside of it. And it called for cording elastic, which I don't know, is that something that was used in 1979? I just used three, let's see, what does this feel like here? I think this is a quarter inch elastic inside there. The sleeves are very, very long as they're designed to be long and worn pushed up. I did remove six inches before I even cut it out. I'm gonna remove some more length and I'm gonna sew it and taper it a little bit more. I think the rayon knit was a really good choice for this pattern. It needed a very soft, drapey knit. Now, as you can see, 
The pockets were really low on this one, and I think it's because it's designed to be pulled up and blousoned over so much, but I was having a little bit of trouble getting my hands in the pocket. There is a lot of fabric in this dress. The bottom width of this dress is over 100 inches. And as you can see here, I was having a lot of difficulty keeping that blouson in place as I was trying to take photos and model. And I wasn't kidding when I said those sleeves are long. That's why I need to chop off a little bit more and make it a little bit tighter so it stays in place. I actually am not going to wear this up as shown. I'm gonna pull it down off my shoulder. I just think that is a cuter look for a summer dress on me. This little boring little top here was a test. This is the mimosa top. It's a loose fitting scoop neck long sleeve top. I just wanted to see how it fit. I don't like it. I don't like it on me. And I especially don't like it in this fabric. It, it looks like a pajama top. <laughs> And again, I just wanted to test the fit to see if I liked it. This is a no for me. It was hard for me to even put this on to take photos and video to share with you. I dislike it that much. I really was just looking for a basic t-shirt pattern that I could just use as my go-to. And this is not going to be it. That was everything that I sewed in the month of February. I'm having a hard time choosing my favorite. It might be this cardigan based on how often I have worn it since I sewed it. But I also like everything that I sewed that I shared with you, except for this one. <laughs> Can't win them all, right? If you enjoyed seeing everything that I've sewed in February, give the video a thumbs up. I would also love to hear in the comments below, let me know what was your favorite make that you sewed in February. If you liked seeing my February makes, you might like watching my other monthly make videos. I will link that playlist above. I'll also put it in the description below so you can check those out. Until next time, happy sewing.